You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for June 28th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the 500th episode of the Cornfield Resistance, where we never terminate our text messages, it's The Professional Left with Drip Glass and Blue Gal. Yeah, we're going to repeat a few times about this being the 500th episode, probably five or six times, so just, you know, <laughs> just get that out of the way. And terminating text messages, I... I couldn't understand that, and what I what I really loved about that story was the number of people on Twitter who watched the phone in with Donald yes. Trump with the yes. sound off, yes. and just watched Maria Bartiromo's face fall off her head. Yes, uh, the uh, the resting Bartiromo face is <laughs> is a is an exciting you know that look we get when you get up late at night and you're half drunk and still hung over and you go to the fridge and you think there's a half of uh, french silk pie in there and someone's just filled it with shit and you just <laughs> <laughs> like oh god what is it and you can't but you can't close the door for some reason because that shit is your boss yeah. so you just stand there staring at it gaping hoping it'll change into something that isn't shit but it's going to be shit until it's gone and then you go on to commercial. Yeah. Um, and that shit is the commander in chief. So you can't really interrupt them and tell him to shut up that he's he's gone berserk and making a fool of himself because all the idiots who watch that show think he's doing a great job. Just do a you great think, job. do you agree with my colleague, Carolee, that he, go, yes. he goes batshit on Fox and Fox business yeah. where it's, uh, you know, Lou Dobbs is an intellectual yeah. uh, and then saves his sa sane moments for Chuck Todd, quote unquote, sane moments for Chuck Todd and other venues. Does he do this whack job? Is this a show or is this really who he I is? think he's I think he's nuts. Uh -huh. um, I think like most of the crackpot right wing uh, idiots I know, uh, there is uh, one voice their their in their outside voice they use when they're among their own kind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and there's a slightly different um, an attempt to sound reasonable, even though the the madness is just boiling right below the surface when they're in company yeah yeah uh, so it's just it's just it's just, it's a reflex they learned from being taught that uh you're an awful person when you start saying crazy shit out in public in private it's okay so donald trump still has, has a vestigial little bit of that but it's mostly gone mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. just he's he's just louder and more hysterical and more really nuts. I mean, terminate, terminate the emails because the lovers struck and the, you know, the lovers, they were love burning everywhere and they terminated and Mueller should be in jail for crimes. That yeah. shit is always, that's the loop in his head all day mm -hmm. long, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. day long. Mm -hmm. But before they shove him in front of a camera with Chuck Todd, somebody whacks him up with something and says, you know, just don't, don't take it up to 11, sir. You know, you know, Chuck Todd hates you. You know that he's the enemy. So, be on, be on your best, you know, hold your fists up, be, be on your best offense. Show George Stephanopoulos the fabric swatches for Air right. Force One, because that's very presidential. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, well, this is our 500th episode, and we want to thank everyone who's written and called and sent emails and so forth. Uh, mm -hmm. We are going to play uh, your phone calls uh, right now, actually. Uh, the ones that said thank you and had uh, general congratulations are right here. Hi, this is John Burt in Corvallis, Oregon. My wife, Kathy, and I very much enjoy listening to Professional Left Podcast. Oregon isn't exactly a deep red area of the country, but uh, sometimes we feel lonely when we notice how many people around us are still acting as though Donald is a real president. Please keep going, guys. Howdy. This is Ray from Washington State, your bookworm. Congratulations on 500 episodes, and may 400 of the next 500 be just labors of love and not have to be a job. Thank you. Goodbye. Hey, this is His Honor from Western Washington State. Uh, looking forward to uh, Podcast 500. 
I listen uh, usually every first thing every Saturday morning to start my weekend out on a good note. Uh, love love your show and love how you do it. Bye bye. There's fake news, there's corporate news, and then there's real news that you can only get from an Illinois cornfield. Blue gal, drift glass, keep giving us the truth with your stubborn indefatigability. Well, that's my obscurity as far as to reference. Congratulations on reaching such an incredible number of podcasts. Love you. Bye-bye. Congratulations on making it to 500 episodes. In the podcast world, so many have fallen off way before they get to such a milestone. Again, I appreciate so much what you do. Uh, your message is it, it, it's something we all we all need to show that there are people out there that think like this. And I'm lucky enough to, to live in a blue oasis in a red sea. And it makes life so, so much easier uh, to realize that there are people that think like me and want the world to be a better place for all people, not just other, not 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 just the people that are like them, but for all people. And keep doing what you're doing. You made it to 500. Looking forward to still listening to you at 1,000. Bye bye. And uh, we have a couple other calls that we'll be playing during the show that are more topical. But thank you, everybody who called in. Our Skype phone number is 217-280-4496. What's, no, that's my social security number. <laughs> don't, do, don't do that. No, it isn't. Don't do that. No, it's not. Silly no, man. No, Close. Uh, really, one digit. <laughs> what are the fucking odds of that? And, uh, yeah, we dedicate our show to you. We dedicate our show, this show, to our wonderful listeners, our amazing supporters who've donated everything from equipment to yarn to scotch to cakes to just everything. To building us a website. Building us a website. Building us a website. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, we would not have this super cool, awesome website with a merch store and, and the kind of uh, highly professional presentation to the outside world. Uh, were it not for our angel nerd. That's right. It's just that's just the truth. We'd still be doing a podcast, but it'd be you and me on uh, a couple of tin cans <laughs> under a viaduct <laughs> yelling at passers by, uh, which would still be amusing. I would still listen to that. But um thanks to all of us, all of you who who lift us up every week. Um and my apologies to all of you who I have still not written thank you notes to because oh, yeah. I'm a terrible person. Oh, no, you're I, you're a perfectionist I, and you can't yeah. You can't do it unless you can do it perfectly. I know. I know I, how that I is. I kind of am. Uh, Drift and, Glass, and I particularly want to thank the listener who said something about this being a labor of love and hoping yeah. that 100, four, 300 out of 400 <laughs> episodes will be a labor of love. I want to yes. do better than that. I know last week was yes. a rough week for us, and uh, yeah. you know we had had an immediate crisis, and we want to mm -hmm. do better and not be quite so uh, in the middle of a crisis every week, you know, the weeks that we have those crises, but uh, you guys stepped That's up. That's what the alcohol is for, Blue Gal. <laughs> That's what the scotch is for. <laughs> Just send us the scotch, and we'll neatly divide our time between <laughs> drinking, dealing internally <laughs> with stuff that's going on at home that's making us sad or angry, and then a professional, polished public podcast, right. which is what which we is have. a labor of love, mm -hmm. and we love you. It is. So thank it you is. for it that. Really, really thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Drift class. Where do you want to go next on our 500th episode? Well, I'd like to thank our many fake sponsors, uh, not all of them, because we have literally, I, I went back and looked, we have dozens and dozens of fake yeah. sponsors that we just made up for fun because there's no advertising on the show. We don't advertise. We don't um, uh, sell your email list to anybody. Nope. We don't do all the things that lots of other people do. Uh, but we do have lots of fake sponsors that we enjoy inventing for our own amusement and hopefully yours. And we have uh, ones that you probably don't remember, like Weiner and Carper Legal Services, which is always fun. And not exactly legal Zoom, which uh, Weiner and Carper advised us was as close as we could get without getting sued. <laughs> uh, early, early uh, adopters to our podcast platform, Croc Blockers. Hey, man, don't wear those shoes. Um, where the good Lord split you, emergency farewell party planners has been our number one hit. That's the one that uh, we go to all the time. And, of course, the classics MacGuffins Muffins yep. and Dukakis Khakis. Yep. They're not good to run in. They're just they're not, not good, good to run in, in. but Even they're though, sensible pants for senseless times. 
they are. And if if a gentleman wearing Dukakis khakis were to run for president this time, I would vote for him. I will vote for any sentient being on the left side of the ticket this time around. And I know yeah. you believe that too. Although Even this week, John Delaney? I would vote for John Delaney. I would vote wow. for the actor playing John Delaney. Wow. I will vote for any goddamn Democrat <laughs> who, ma- who, let me be clear, who makes it through the primary process and becomes yeah. the nominee of the Democratic Party. I will work my ass off for them. I will vote for them. All the stuff that we say between now and the final decision, that's a family fight. Because here's yep. the thing. The only mm-hmm. place left in America where you can have adult conversations about real issues is the Democratic Party. So that's you're, correct. So you're going to have fist fights between family members over health care and over immigration and over law enforcement and over the environment. But you're having adult conversations within the confines of one party because the other party is dead. It's just fucking dead. And, and let's let's talk about the debates since that's sort sure. of right at the top of the list here. Mm-hmm. Um, I do strongly believe that whoever comes out of this process will be a better candidate for yes. having gone through this process. Yes. Uh, the ideas that were expressed uh, on the stage both nights, mm-hmm. um, whoever come, becomes president as a result of this mm-hmm. uh Whatever comes out of the Congress, these ideas about elections, these ideas about guns, these, all of the health care ideas, the president, the Democratic president of the United States is going to work with a Democratic Congress to get these ideas passed into law. Yes. And so I just really want to advise everyone <laughs> that when if you're fighting about issues and saying, well, so-and-so doesn't believe. Now, granted... John Delaney yesterday was pretty terrible on health care. Yes, he was. I, I really disagree with him. Yes, I do. And I don't absolutely believe disagree that he with should, him. I absolutely will not vote for him as, an, as a primary candidate because right. of his stand on health care. Absolutely. Uh, will he put kids in cages? No. no. Will, <laughs> will he pull will, us out of the climate change? Will he piss well, off NATO? Let's, let's talk about if yeah. will he, if a Democratic Congress and a Democratic Senate pass a health care bill, will he sign it? Sure he will. I believe you know he will. Why? He'll be so surprised and shocked <laughs> he's president of the United States. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm what? I got what? I won what? He will sign anything that we put in front of him. Yep. He really will. He'll be so yep. thrilled. Um, is it's he'll be the Sally Fields of inaugural address. You know, you like me. You and, really and like I love, me. And I love I love Kirsten Gillibrand talking about how uh, decisions are made behind closed doors. Yeah, and uh, it's important to have a president behind that closed door who is standing up for women's rights. She was particularly yes. talking about. But mm-hmm. you know, I think you put Maisie Hirono behind a closed door yeah. with with John Delaney <laughs> mm-hmm. and let her talk to him about yeah. health care. Yeah. She'll come out with one shoe off yeah. and a little bit of blood on the end of yeah. it, and uh, bo- bo- he'll have signed her- the health care bill. <laughs> yeah, as she walks through the door, she starts taking her earrings off. Like, yeah. oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. Here we go. Secret <laughs> Service is just down the hall in the bathroom washing nah, their hands. We oh, don't yeah. care. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> we're, we're as shocked as you are, but, you know. So, yeah. so yes. So these ideas uh, don't die on the hill is what I'm saying. And don't, right. don't feel like uh, – you know, don't die on the hill of, oh, if we don't have this specific, you know, if Medicare for all isn't in place on my birthday, right. <laughs> you know? because everyone wants, except for John Delaney. Yes. God bless him. Yes. You know, people are moving toward universal coverage and yes, people are, are moving toward single payer. That's and everyone the, that's wants the... to get most people on that stage want to get to those points. Yes. And, and uh, that's the rock that Barack Obama started rolling down the hill. Right. And it and is it's still, not going back up. It's not going back up. Exactly. Right. So right. Uh, take a deep breath and we will get there. Let's get the best candidate yeah. out of this nomination process. As I've said before, our vote doesn't come till after Super Tuesday. Illinois does not right. vote until after Super Tuesday. I guarantee you there will be 17 fewer candidates. Yes. When you and I have to vote. Yeah. And that's the, that's that is the way of things. Yeah. And th- there was no way for anyone to win a 20 person debate. Yeah. There were Wasn't lots the format of ways for- horrible? No, no, it was, for- it was horrible. <laughs> Chuck Todd was awful. The format was horrible. Um, they they did the best they could. They being the candidates on stage, um, the, the people on the second night seem to have learned from the first night about. No, you just have to interrupt. Yeah, you yell at them. Just, yeah. just yell at them and keep keep at it. And just you because you're fighting for 
oxygen in a small room. And there was no way to win, but there were lots of ways to lose. Well, and or Joe go, Biden to, saying, oh, wait, my time is up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, was well, an admission of defeat in my personal opinion. This is this letting everyone see them on stage together, side by side, in, insofar as it's possible. It, I'm sorry. Th- there is no other format where some large group of voters or supporters would not be bitching that it wasn't fair. Right. Uh, right. There just isn't. There, right. if, if it were a smaller group, every candidate of every boutique candidate would be out there talking about being rigged. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. it were everyone on stage. So this is this is what is meant by an embarrassment of riches. You literally have a 20 course meal and and it's laid out in front of you and it's too much. Mm-hmm. It's way too much. Mm-hmm. But there's no way to make it smaller other than the winnowing process. And let's remember that it's June of 2019. Right. It's early. It's really early. There could be more people declaring to to run for all we well, know. Well, there was. So, Joe Sestak declared this Joe week. And he did. To everyone's surprise and disappointment. <laughs> yeah. Joe Sestak has his own his own Me Too movement. It's just strictly about him being a candidate. <laughs> and, you know, and good for him. I, I declared this week, but no one paid much attention. <laughs> Do <Dear> um, for president. <laughs> and, and and I think we need to go back into our archives, Blue Gal. Yeah. This is the to understand why no one listened to me when I declared for president. Oh, okay. Um, I, I just... This is because this is a 500th episode, and we we did go into our archives just looking for stuff because we've been doing this a long time. We have a lot of episodes, and we started keeping notes, um, uh, really kind of podcast notes. You would be embarrassed to see them. The, the first one I found was June 2011. I am embarrassed we were, about earlier. Was, was I, wish, I hope people don't go back to our archives and listen to no, really old no. shows. If they're not- oh, no. Well, <laughs> you know, they can if they want. I mean, if you have that kind of time, may I suggest – uh, ma- making a large checkout. Well, to the professional we, we pay to by the month extra, yeah. a little extra yeah. to Buzzsprout, our podcast host, to keep the archives. To keep the archives because they will delete yeah. them after four four episodes if you don't pay for that yes, premium service of keeping the archives. Um, yeah. And, and our first set of notes, not our first podcast, but our first set of notes was from Netroost Nation in 2011. Oh my gosh, was that we was that there, the week that youngest child broke my laptop screen? I believe yes, <laughs> that was the, and I. <laughs> I, that, I'm not sure if it was the same trip where I had a spa treatment. Yes, um, it was. Yes, no, it was. Yeah. Yes, it was. You had you had business to attend to, so I had to. I, I had um, uh, hotel uh, soap and moisturizer on my face, and I had hand lotion because and I was having a full spa. The two treatment. girls were doing your nails, and yes. he, you were keeping them busy while I was yes. meeting with. They people. can do nothing with my hair. It's just it's <laughs> just gone. No That's hair. a lost cause, pal. You do have, you have John Delaney hair, actually. I do. I do. <laughs> I do. And the only thing keeping me from having a John Delaney face is a goatee and a beard yeah. uh, and a mustache. Yeah. Um, so we have – and this was the, the the convention where the right online convention was right next door. They were in the same hotel. This is when the Breitbart scumbags would deliberately counter-program right. any attempt by liberals to have any conference anywhere just to show up and 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 run through the halls calling us assholes and traitors. Um, but the, of the few notes we made um, – I noted that a, there was a distinct feeling that the party had moved on, that the net roots was now a thing of the past. Uh, there were almost no A-listers there. There were no A-list celebrities. There were no A-list candidates, almost none. Uh, there was virtually zero media. When I went to Netroots Nation in 2008 in Chicago, everybody was there. This was the this was the 2008 election. Um, all the major candidates were there. Right. There was international media. The, the media practically outnumbered the bloggers who were there, international media. This is the same conference a few years later. There was no media, virtually none. The only TV camera I saw was from Fox 9. And that was Minneapolis versus Chicago. That was uh, a non-election year versus an election year. And it is a conscious decision that Netroots Nation has made to have their convention around the country so that people can attend from various parts of the country without a lot of expense. And... Mm -hmm. uh, I personally think that's a mistake from the standpoint of having a national message. They should have it mm-hmm. in D.C. every year or they should have yep. something in D.C. every year. Uh, but, you know, that is kowtowing to Beltway uh, myopia. My, myopia, is myopia. that the right word? Myopia. Myopia, myopia. there we go. It, well, it's also acknowledging and recognizing um, that everyone – 
who with a with a television camera and a newspaper lives in DC and New York and LA. Right. Um, and that's just reality. And that's where po- that's the, where the centers of political power are. That's where honestly, that's where most all the liberal podcast networks are. That's yep. that's just where yep. they go. That's where the you have to live there and know those people to be you know networked into that group. And there, so I and understand a number. It. There's been a number of times on our podcast where you have mentioned this kind that it's Rome. You know, we have this yeah this huge center of gravity in our political discussion. And yes. and it looks weird from a distance, and you get there, and oh, holy shit, it's correct. Right. Right, just <laughs> like just Rome. Bad. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and and if this were the Mensa annual gathering, <laughs> or if this were the Hugo Awards, and they moved it all over the earth, you know, every year it's a different different city. That's fine. I understand that because the goal of those conventions is not to attract national political media and make political change in the world. But even that's even the, the knitting different. conventions I go to sometimes, Drift Glass, are in the same hotel every year because it's yeah. easier. Just- to make plans and arrangements and organize mm-hmm. yourself that way. So, and well, I, I, I also want to move on to uh, just pulled one letter from the many, many we received. See, back in 2011, we were at that time, we were regularly reading letters from listeners. We, we had reached that point where we were getting a lot of feedback from you guys and, and a lot of good intel and a lot of suggestions and a lot of why don't you talk closer to the microphone drift class? So, <laughs> things like that. And, I, and we took a lot of that to heart and a lot of it made us laugh. But we were taking letters from readers, and I pulled one out because I really want to emphasize when this letter was written. Uh, and in, in this was in December of 2011, and it's from a, a listener who called himself Peter Parker, and we know him, and that's his pseudonym. What we want to emphasize, what I, what I want to emphasize is this is what we liberals out here in the middle of middle America were seeing and hearing and warning about every day years before Donald Trump entered the Mm -hmm. picture. This is the universe that we were screaming about, warning about, uh, setting the alarm, anything we could do to start the, to to sound the alarm. This is the universe that we were being told by people who now call themselves never Trumpers, but back then they were just called Republicans. We were being told by these people and everyone on the Beltway media that we were crazy, that we were nuts. The the Republican Party wasn't like this, that that's just alarmist and foolish and they're just a small fringe. So this is from Peter Parker, Remember, this is from December of 2011, eight years ago. Just a quick anecdote. My dad is a diehard conservative, and it's very frustrating to argue with him. The thing is that every time he comes out with some bizarre screed like, Will Ayers is Barry Obama's best bud, or Acorn is a criminal organization, I have to already be familiar enough with a lie to debunk it. This is not entirely difficult, since I read far too many blogs and think browsing media matters is fun, but often he's read something on the Drudge Report that's far below my notice, like how expensive muffins are. Remember that? <laughs> While I'm too preoccupied with things that are actually, you know, relevant to the national security. I'll be blindsided with these faux stories and can only counter them with, that sounds like total horseshit. Honestly, the biggest problem is that when we really get into the nitty gritty of the argument, deconstructing why he thinks a certain thing and why it is not true, we keep bumping up against facts. Impossible to deny real concrete facts like budget numbers or percentages or what Obama has actually done instead of what Fox News says he has done. My dad, and he is a tip, he is typical of all Tea Party folks in this respect, simply refuses to accept these. He doesn't reject the premise of, of the fact or argue with the interpretation. He says the numbers themselves are true, but their collection and framing is biased. He just straight up does not believe me. He lives in another world. This is distressing to me since he's a smart, caring man, and I love him. But the things he believe are sim- things he believes are simply lies, no way around it. And they often rely on racist premises. Really, Dad, our healthcare costs are rising because of illegals. It's not structural problems with the for-profit system. The worst part of it all is admitting that the country simply will not make any progress on these very serious issues until people like my regressive father are no longer part of the conversation. Wow. Period. That is what people like us were warning about and have been warning about when, back when we were just bloggers, back before we were bloggers. We were just liberals out there in the countryside waving our arms and screaming about this guy named Newt Gingrich and this guy named Rush Limbaugh. And Rush Limbaugh is a, a, a cancer on this country and it's growing every day. And everybody who now, virtually everyone who now occupies a position of privilege in the media, 
who has a New York Times column and is a conservative or who has a, a position out there in the world where they get invited onto panels. These are the Rick Wilsons and the Tom mm -hmm. Nichols and the Michael Gersons and on and on and on. People who have a job whose whole job is to be right about politics. These are the very people who were telling us to shut up and sit down because we were crazy. There was nothing wrong with the Republican Party. Everything was fine. This whole idea that the Republican Party was racist or anti-immigrant or nuts was just bullshit. And Donald Trump proved every one of those people wrong. And every one of those people got a promotion. And that's what's broken about our media, is that you cannot have this kind of conversation with people like that at well, the table. Because they will not admit what Andrew the real Klass, problem is. Those promoted mm -hmm. people are now lecturing the Democratic Party to yes. please, Thank to you, please select an appropriate, electable, middle-of-the-road white male. <laughs> it's a center-right country, to, Blue to, Gal. To Just please to get over them it. so that right. they can vote and have their conscience cleared and know that uh, mm -hmm. Trump isn't real. You know, Trump isn't, part, you know, isn't if we their don't, party. Right. If we don't nominate a center-right uh, moderate centrist, we're going to lose the vote of David Brooks. <laughs> Um, I'm just saying, we're going to lose the support of Tom Nichols. He'll, he's just going to walk away. Rick Wilson will just leave in a huff and write another book about what a bunch of shitty, shitty people the, the liberals are and how we have to start a third party called the Rick Wilson party, I guess. Um, all of these people have been wrong about everything their entire life and really toxically wrong. These people were not wrong about the weather. They weren't wrong about crops. They were wrong about the rise of fascism in their own goddamn party, the one fucking subject they were supposed to be able to speak honestly and clearly about based on inside information, they got it wrong. And now they're turning around and have the fucking temerity to tell Democrats, well, you know, unless you nominate someone that's to my liking, I'll just have to fucking leave. And my answer is leave. Here's an idea. Leave completely. Go the fuck away. Fred Hyatt, fire Michael Gerson. You know what? The Schulzberger family fire David Brooks and put someone, for God's sakes, in positions of authority at the pinnacle of American punditocracy who actually knows what the fuck is going on inside their own goddamn political party. The only people who were speaking truth about the Republican Party for the last 30 years was Rush Limbaugh <laughs> and liberals. And that's the God's honest truth. And it sickens me that we've reached all the way to 2019 and all these people still have a place at the table because that's the way the corporate media because wants why it to be. Don't anyway. These never Trumper Republicans uh, get together and endorse Bill mm -hmm. Weld. That's a great and just, question. Even too. just Bill that's Weld in New really Hampshire, you question. could humiliate Donald Trump in New Hampshire. Bill Weld is a mass sure. former Massachusetts Poor governor. You have He's a, a neighbor. A He's a New Englander. He's yeah. libertarian. I didn't realize this, but he's a year older than Trump. That's, I mean, his hair looks much better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and he speaks in coherent mm -hmm. sentences. Right. Uh, I do not understand why, just as a tactical matter, they spend their time lecturing Democrats about selecting Joe Biden instead of trying to save their party. But I think I do know the answer to that. Well, that's a question that, um, <laughs> that's a question yeah. that uh, everyone mm -hmm. from Chris Hayes to Charlie Pierce to your humble uh, co-podcaster here has been asking of people yeah. on the Twitter, because that really is the only way they'll speak to you, mm -hmm. uh, right up until they block you, uh, repeatedly. And the answer is, fuck you, I'm not going to answer your question uh and just bypass the question entirely. Mm -hmm. The answer, I think, really is, and I'd love to hear your answer, but since you asked me the question, I will answer it to the best of my ability, is that they, they're they they're not stupid. They know that they are chin deep in shit. They know that they mm -hmm. have completely fucked up. They know that their party is dead. There's nothing to – 90% right. of, the, of their party will, will support Donald Trump. And Bill Weld will be cast out. The minute Bill Weld opens his mouth and says one bad thing about Donald Trump, he will be run out of town on a rail. And they know it. Mm -hmm. They really do know their party. They're just liars. David Trump, uh, David Trump, David Brooks is a liar. Tom Nichols is a liar. Rick, Rick Wilson's a liar. They, they fucking well know this party. They have been making money promoting the racist assholes who run their party for years. They fucking well know who the base is and what they will tolerate. They know they've lost their party. So they have to do what this mainstream media did in 2016, a variation of it, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. what's my move after the election? 
What position do I want to be after the election? Well, I want to, yeah. I want to be able to sit on the sidelines and say, told you so, told you so. They want to, they're not thinking about the good of the country because these people don't give a shit right. about this country. Because if they did, you're right. They'd be behind Bill Weld. They'd be in their trench cleaning up their mess. They don't want to do that. They're, they're royalty, Blue Gal. They're aristocrats. They don't want to get their hands dirty with cleaning up the mess they made. That's my job. Their job is to look over my right, shoulder right. and tell me why I'm not living up to their fucking expectations. And they will not. And they've been living a privileged life for so long. Um, I believe it was uh, uh, Charlie Chaplin who said, mm-hmm, the saddest thing mm-hmm. I can think of is getting used to luxury. These people have gotten used to the luxury of not having to actually do anything or be productive in any way, sitting on their fat asses and opining into the air and having people scribble it down as if it's holy writ. And and everything that they have said over the years has proved to be wrong. They don't know how to do anything yeah. but sit on their asses and bitch about other people's failures. They don't know how to organize campaigns. They don't know how to win campaigns. Now, I will say Rick Wilson was saying, even though he blocks me, I have my sources, um, saying, well, sure, I've, I, I've kicked Democratic asses for 30 years, but don't listen to me. Go right ahead. Go ahead and lose. Well, yeah, you you won elections by harnessing the worst, most racist, awful people in America to your party and using them as a sledgehammer. Mm-hmm. That's not an option Democrats have or want. That is who you are. So that's not a, a that's not a strategy you can replicate on the left because you've already cornered the market on the assholes on the right. But they're not used to doing anything but using language to explain why everyone's wrong and everyone should fucking listen to them from the sidelines and getting paid a lot of money to do it. They don't know how to do anything. Yeah, else. I would. So that's I my would say that that, that you're What's, right. That about you? The reason they don't do that is that they know that that's a blip on the screen of history that they could possibly humiliate Donald Trump in mm-hmm. New Hampshire. But what's the point? The point is, you know, you get to South Carolina, he wins. You get to anywhere south of the Mason-Dixon, he wins. You get to right. anywhere west of the Mississippi, he wins. The Republican <laughs> Party is Trump. And they mm-hmm. always have been. They were Trump before Trump. Right. So it is an admission of guilt. And I want to segue from that to the gerrymandering decision that was made by the Supreme Court that somehow, oh, federal, we can't get into politics. Yeah. <laughs> court, court, court can't get into politics. That's oh, crazy no. talk. No. This is an admission by the conservatives on the court and every conservative down from there that Republicans cheat, that Republicans win elections by cheating and by racism. And that's it. So we now have... <laughs> We now have a situation where the battle goes to the ground and everyone needs to follow Common Cause on Twitter. Everyone needs to keep track of what's going on in your state in terms of fair maps. Google fair maps and your state and find out what's going on. Some states, I've had a big education about this from Junior Dude because he's all over it. Uh, Some states have referendums on this sort of thing like Ohio and then the state legislature, which is Republican, undoes, just like they've done with Medicare expansion in other states. You know, the will of the people is no, has nothing to do with Republican yeah. majorities in a state house. So, so that's, you know, the battle continues. No. But uh, Ohio had uh, issue one on the ballot and it passed. There are, and you, you have said this, I've said this, Chris Hayes has said this. Republican boots on the ground recognize they hate gerrymandering. They hate Citizens United. They want fair elections. They want it to be one person, one citizen, one vote. Right. They might have stupid ideas about illegals voting and a lot of other bullshit. But when it comes down to it, they don't want politicians at the state house deciding for them who their candidate's going to be and how the election's going to go. They want to have that decision. So this is a place where you can work with Republicans locally mm-hmm. and get support and have conversations. And uh, we have to go there. That I was grateful to see on the debates how many of the candidates recognize that the threat to our democracy is not just from Russia. It is from Republicans in the United States mm-hmm. who do not want fair elections, who do not want fair yeah. apps. So who, who know that they can't win. unless they, they can't win unless they yeah. cheat and they mm-hmm. cheat. Uh, and Jimmy Carter today. Did you see Jimmy Carter? I Jimmy did. Carter called Donald Trump an illegitimate president. He did. And uh, he could run. Know, 
I, one, I say he could. I said one good one good term left in him. Uh huh. I said mm-hmm. the uh, the reason that he's the first former president to call a sitting president quote unquote illegitimate mm-hmm. is that uh, Donald Trump is the first illegitimately elected president if you don't count Bush. And Florida, right? Yeah, and the yeah, Broward and County do. black voters who <laughs> yeah. were disenfranchised after they voted. That mm-hmm. was that was a real thing there. That was pretty cool how they were actually able to disenfranchise black voters after the ballots had been cast. Well, see, Blue Gal, uh, here's the problem. That's in the past. And the past <laughs> never happened. The past is irrelevant. What really happened back then? The left remembers. The left the remembers, press. Blue Gal. The left, the left remembers. remembers. Mm-hmm. Uh Let's move on. I want to talk about immigration, and uh, I don't want to cry on our 500th podcast, so no, no. Uh, I apologize. I know uh, this has been an incredibly tough week to be watching the news at all from the standpoint mm-hmm. of immigration. Let's play uh, Tammy's uh, voicemail. Tammy is yes. our angel nerd and our fan girl and wonderful woman, and uh, she sent us this voicemail. This is Tammy in Austin, Texas, pro left pod angel nerd and drift glass and blue gal fangirl. I'm calling about immigration, family, and history. I'm a third generation American with a rare last name, which makes tracing my family easy. Family histories are the part of our stories that happen before our character enters the narrative. Talpus was a village in Transylvania and is still there in Romania. In the medieval armies of Hungary, Wallachia, and Transylvania, Talpas meant foot soldier. My paternal great-grandparents, John Talpas and Catherine Ann Martinkovich Talpas, came here in 1918. America's response to my family's arrival, and so many other Eastern and Southern Europeans and Asians, was ferocious. The Quota Act of 1921. The Immigration Act of 1924. The KKK's triumphant march on Washington, D.C. with their hoods up showing their faces in 1925. My family has been here a hundred years, and nowadays people just see me as a little old white lady. Nobody knows what my last name means or even what country it comes from. My last name is Talpas, and we were hated by white supremacists and nativists, just like the migrants and asylum seekers at our southern border are hated today by about a third of this country, many of whom have family stories just like mine. My story is about ignorance, hypocrisy, cruelty, and my last name. Talpas means foot soldier, and that is exactly who I am. A foot soldier at war against ignorance, hypocrisy, cruelty, and at war for my country and what it must become. The professional left are my brother and sister in arms, and I literally don't know what I would do without them. Thank you, Tammy. And I love how she connected uh, what's going on right now and the injustice that's going on right now to her own family yeah. and to American history, uh, the story of America yeah. and all of us having come here from somewhere and many of us having been, been discriminated against. Yeah, this is a story that we are all living through. Mm-hmm. Uh, at this particular moment, we are all alive and all have some control over which direction the story goes. And we need to take control. Uh, away from the people who want to steer us into darkness forever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And let's play, let's play one more voicemail while we're at it. Uh, this okay. one is just ha- somebody who has a uh, language disagreement with us, and so uh, and and very kind. So let's listen to what he has to say. Hey, a blue gal, Ad Todd here out of Utah. First call, hopefully, uh, listening to the current professional left. Um, I understand what you're trying to say when you're talking about stealing emails. Uh, my only quibble is is the same quibble as I have when people talk about stealing electronic books. Uh, unless the place that the emails are stored is completely wiped and unrecoverable, it's not theft. It is a copy, yes. It is acquired illegally, yes, but it is not theft. We need new words in our language to describe something like this. Again, just a quibble. Keep up the good work. Keep having fun. 
uh, go postal unions, and uh, what was that about the kitty litter? Well, I can't sing. So anyway, ha- goodbye. So, yeah, I do think we need new language for how we deal with stolen emails, quote unquote. Uh, right. We need to understand that the laws need to be toughened and and strengthened and uh, election year, election espionage. People need to go to prison for that. Yes, yes, they uh, do. Yes, and they do. and they, that's they... why paper ballots and mail-in ballots is such a, a big deal because uh, mail-in ballots, uh, anyone interferes with that, that's mail fraud. And there are prison mm-hmm. sentences for that. So uh, mm-hmm. that's a criminal situation. So we'll get there. We'll get there. But thank you for that phone call. Yeah. You know what you don't go to prison for? What? Uh, if you and your naked wife and a pool boy decide to uh, decide to meet Jesus's payroll, right? <laughs> that's right. I remember reading uh, essays by Harlan Ellison in the eighties about Jerry Falwell and what a rotting slab of bigoted meat he mm-hmm. was, and how you'll always discover at the end of the day that whatever the hell these fake Christians, these lying. Bible thumping scumbags are angry about and they're inveighing against that they are themselves the most rancid examples of whatever it is they're mad about. And Jerry Falwell Jr., who inherited a uh, bigoted segregationist university, quote unquote, from his evil father, uh, has really gone out of his way to be even worse than daddy Mm -hmm. was. Even mm-hmm. worse. And so when he, uh, when naked pictures of his wife and a pool boy show up uh, and himself show up, uh, his, uh, his response is, you don't know how hard it is to build a business. You never, you never had to make me a payroll. The, the fact that he can continue to show up on Republican radar, the fact that Lindsey Graham mm-hmm. is, is not just, his tongue hasn't burst into flames by now. The fact that he hasn't been tied down in five point restraints and tranquilized for being clearly out of his fucking mind, just the lowest kind of spineless jellyfish um, is all any sane or healthy society would need to as a as a as evidence that the party in which these people are prominent members uh, needs to be sequestered and slowly killed off electorally. These people can never be allowed near power. These are sick, evil motherfuckers who need to be uh, walled off and and until they're small enough to be used as an object lesson to future generations of never let this happen again. Never, ever let this kind of horrible propaganda-driven for-profit Fox News hate radio fascism grow up inside your country because these are the people that almost destroyed America, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. almost broke democracy. In fact, I would argue that they really have. They've already wrecked democracy. Yeah. What we're really We've arguing a lot of about now is what, to do. A lot of yeah, what do we do, do next? Yeah, yeah. And we cannot rebuild as long as these people are on the sidelines lobbing Molotov cocktails at us if they're conservatives, if they're Republicans, or bitching about how we're not pushing the broom just right if they're never Trumpers. These people have all got to sit down for 10 or 15 years or 20 years or 30 years and shut up. The problem is this is what we were saying 10 years ago. Yeah. Well, drip class, I wanted to, I wanted to connect some dots here. uh, Sure. In terms of this week, uh, Donald Trump was credibly accused of sexual assault for the 22nd time. Yep. And the mainstream media treated it like a non-story. Like page 12. Page or, or in the book review, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, the Dalai Lama, as I mentioned, uh, is wanting uh, if if there's going to be a female successor to him, you know, she's got to be attractive. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Falwell Jr.'s goal in life is uh, reversing Roe v. Wade, keeping women in the kitchen. Uh, he's portraying and promoting a picture of gender relations, uh, not to mention suppressing gay people and trans people. Uh, There is a connection between all of these stories, the suppression and denigration of women, gays, African-American, people of color, Mm -hmm. migrants, all of it. And, you know, we marched in January of 2017 over this. Yes, we did. And saw it and saw what it was. And uh, it's only gotten worse, but, uh, to pretend like, oh, my God, who knew that this was going to be 
uh, this bad or that Donald Trump could hit a new low this week. Everybody. By talking about John McCain not being on greener pastures. Right, dance, literally dancing on John McCain's grave. Saying right. that. You know, In front of the Faith and Freedom Coalition. Yeah. Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? They're, they're, yeah. they're all scumbags together. They're all brothers of that ilk under the skin. They all have dark hearts. They all have sold their souls for various horrible reasons. They're all fascists. They're all racist. They're all scum. And so, so why wouldn't he share that with them? And that's the part where, you, where you're with a bunch of horrible people and one of them goes way over the line. And there's that moment right. where, holy shit, are we now this bad? And they're all like, well, I guess, it's, I guess we are. <laughs> and we're, now yeah. it's funny. But yeah, he danced on. He said we needed 60 votes. We had 51. And sometimes we had a hard time with a couple. Fortunately, they're gone now. They've gone under greener right. pastures or perhaps far less green, but they're gone. Very, very happy they're gone. This is dancing in John McCain's grave. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, you know, his daughter, I'm sure, will uh, talk about, you know, her, whose whole life, I forget who said this, is now a noun of verb, my dad. That's, that was Charlie Pierce. That was Charlie Pierce. Yeah. Way to go, Charlie. Yep. That's exactly, that's all she does now. Um, and her horrible husband runs a horrible website funded by horrible people who are an insult to every single thing John McCain ever stood for. Right. And and I am sorry that Meghan McCain has a seat on a television right. show. She should, she should be um, in mourning. She should be mourning her dad yeah. for two years, yeah. as long as she needs. Yeah. Uh, this The display that they are putting on her, I think, is abuse. Yeah. And uh, I'm sorry for that. But uh, she's right about this week, boy. Mm -hmm. they, the statement that he made, I couldn't believe that he could go lower in my estimation mm -hmm. than he already was. But he, he did. And she'll vote for him. And <laughs> she'll vote Republican. She she'll will. vote for his party. Sure. Yeah, of course she will. Of course she will. Because yeah. that's, you know, that's who these people are. And that's who they've always been. And that's what we've been saying for, frankly, far too long. Um, Drift Glass, let's continue on with our news roundup. Sure. The House Oversight Committee authorized a subpoena for Kellyanne Conway after mm -hmm. she failed to show for a hearing about her alleged violations of the Hatch Act. They should hire Josh Randall to bring her in. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's Steve McQueen from One a Dead or Alive, Bounty Hunter. You know, she if she tries to run, <laughs> I think we should put Josh Randall on her tail and bring her in. Because these criminals, they're going to run, Blue Gal. That's what they do. And what you need at this point is a bounty hunter. A good, reliable bounty hunter with a stellar record of bringing them in, uh, strapped over a horse if necessary. But these people mm -hmm. need to be brought to justice. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, Donald Trump went berserk on Fox TV, accusing Bob Mueller without any evidence at all of terminating FBI communications and terminating this. That's illegal. That's a crime. And again, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't 25th Amendment. -ed. Everyone shrugged because that's, you know, that's who that's who Donald Trump is. And that's who the Republican Party is now. Uh, the Supreme Court blocked the citizenship question from being added to the 2020 census, yeah. and conservatives across the board are decrying yes. John Roberts. Impeach as, John Roberts. Impeach John Roberts against the Constitution. Because he lied. Yeah. And and the only thing, I forget who said this on Twitter, as usual, um, said everything else you just said, Matt Schlapp, I think it was, who's a you know mm -hmm. Republican. Oh, God. Hey, he is one of the Brooks Brothers rioters. Let's not forget, he suppressed black votes in Florida. Yes, he did. And and his wife worked for uh, Donald Trump in the White House. And they're just yep. they're just loathsome, odious lizard people. Uh, but the idea that we're going to start impeaching people for lying is one that I hope catches on because that <laughs> that could be uh, that could that could change things just a little bit. Uh, Let's go there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do want to mention that John Kelly uh, this week uh, joined the board of the largest baby caging company in America. So, you know. They're all profiting. John yeah. Corn, Texas, also is a uh, mm -hmm. recipient of uh, largesse from private prison. Yeah. 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 yeah this, is, this is how they make their money. Yeah. Flesh peddling. Flesh peddling. Uh, so Donald Trump got to go overseas and represent America along yeah. with uh, Jared and yeah. uh, Ivanka. Uh, <laughs> Long brown strike over over the Pacific as he was flying there. Yeah, he marked his arrival in Japan for the G20 summit by lashing out at U.S. allies. He complained that if the U.S. were attacked, Japan would simply watch it on a Sony television instead yeah. of coming to America's defense. He called Germany a security freeloader, and he complained about India's new tariffs on U.S. goods. Mm -hmm. uh, that was right the day after Mike Pompeo had smoothed things over with India. Yeah. And I watched quite a bit of uh, Indian news coverage, 
and everyone was just baffled because they had one story Thursday that Mike Pompeo is talking to Indian officials. He's working it out, is going to work out. And the next day, Donald Trump sent a tweet and yes, blew did. the whole thing up sky high. So why wouldn't he? Robert Mueller has agreed to testify for the House Intelligence and Judiciary Committees in back-to-back public hearings on July 17th. That's so. the day after my birthday. Yes. Yeah. Happy birthday, Blue Guy. Happy Gal. birthday. Yeah. And <laughs> Drift Class, you need to know this. My birthday is Amazon Prime Day. <laughs> Wow. Okay. I guess we're going to be watching. Uh, oh, the loudest voice in the, the loudest voice in the room. Is that right? Sunday night. Yeah. The Sunday loudest. Night. It's just called the loudest voice. It's the uh, loudest voice. Yeah. It's Roger Ailes. Uh, and it's the Roger Ailes story. Played, it, with... it, the Roger Ailes story, played by uh, the guy from uh, Gladiator, Rod, yes. uh, Russell Crowe. Yeah. Russell Crowe. Yeah. yeah. He's he's trying to outdo Christian Bale. So I wish him <laughs> all. And you know what? Great. I'm. I'm this is the thing. Um, unless this is why this actually does tie to Robert Mueller. Yeah. Um, unless this shit is dramatized right in front of people, like we have reached that preliterate stage of culture where Honestly. unless you have stained glass windows explaining what the Bible means, mm-hmm. no one's going to read the goddamn book because we don't right. read long books because they're scary. Well, let's have let's have that guy interpret it for us. In this case, that guy is Sean Hannity, who just lies all the time and is a racist asshole. So yeah. unless things are dramatized. Uh, their horror is just blows past people until it comes up behind them and they notice that their country is gone. So yeah. I'm, I'm very glad that they're, that they, they're making a mini series out of the many horrors of Ro- that Roger Ailes has unleashed on this country. Donald Trump told reporters that what he says to Putin in private is none of your business. <laughs> look, <laughs> look, he's my type. Okay. <laughs> and pillow talk between us is none of your goddamn business. Uh-huh. Okay? But what happens between a man and the guy who's got a leash around him and his face in his crotch and he does it. That's private. That's all private. That's stuff that you have no business. And it, this, again, take anything he does. Take a dart. Take a pin. Put it in any day in the calendar on anything Donald Trump does compared to anything any Democrat has done in your lifetime. Mm-hmm. And the Republican Party would have already burned the White House to the ground. Absolutely. So yeah. the argue, any argument on behalf of anyone on the right – that either the Republican Party is salvageable or Democrats owe it to them somehow to clean up their toxic mess in a way that suits them personally, that isn't personally offensive, that's more business friendly. You know, more center right is horseshit. Mm -hmm. You put on the goddamn hazmat suit and you get in there and fix it. And Tom Nichols' answer was, well, you know, unless they pay me a lecture fee, I'm not going to go and tell these people anything. Well, it is obvious to me that the Democratic voters' appetite is for people who will talk like you. Yes. Not people who talk like Tom Nichols. No. And so, that, except less fucks. We, not that they disappoint me. <laughs> Nobody said fuck during the debate yet. 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 I still have hopes <laughs> that at some point someone's going to say, and and this, I really, I still recommend this for free to any Democratic Yeah, you were recommending this last night to Joe Biden, actually. I was. Right. I said, if Joe Biden says this, he, he, would, he would solidify his floor at least. And the answer is, the, the statement is, None of us should be here tonight, which we've said before, because Hillary Clinton should be here. This should not be happening because Hillary Clinton should be president today. The election was stolen from her by by the cheaters and liars and thugs and racists. And I'm running for president to get that son of a bitch out of our White House. Yep. And dro- drop the mic. Yeah. You know, yep. that's that's the statement. You we got screwed last time. We all agree we got screwed last time. And I'm I am personally committing to you that I will pry that monster the fuck out of the people's house. And isn't it funny and, that the, cl- the person that's come closest saying that is Jimmy Carter? I know. I know. Yeah. Well, seriously. He's, he's drunk all the time. You know? <laughs> yeah. The EPA air chief resigned amid scrutiny over possible yeah. alleged violations of federal ethics rules. Do yeah. we still have federal ethics rules, Driftland? We well, sort of. They're ethics suggestions. Uh-huh. They're like <laughs> they're like those those hang in there. Uh, Fridays on the way, kitten posters on the walls now. <laughs> They're just like encouraging notions that you shouldn't violate the law. But if you ignore them, really, who cares? We're all looters here. We're all we're all going to steal everything we can lay our hands on. So just the 11th commandment is don't get caught. And mm-hmm. now the 11th mm-hmm. commandment has been repealed because Trump's been caught a million times. His kids have been caught a million times. Kellyanne and, Conway's been caught on camera multiple times. Yeah. Right. And right. The, the rule now is make sure you own the courts and you, at least one house of the Senate. 
on half of the Senate, and no one will ever go to jail, no matter how awful they are. Um, Donald Trump's protocol chief has been suspended indefinitely ahead of the G20 summit. Uh, Sean Lawler is his name, and he's being investigated by the State Department Inspector General over accusations that he intimidated his staff and carried a whip in the office. Yeah, that was nice. Gotta say, gotta say. If I worked in this White House, you'd carry a whip for a day. <laughs> I might just carry a whip around, but for entirely different reasons. Jeff, Bass, tell us about the local news items. They're very funny. Oh, our local our local news is hilarious. Uh, uh, the paper is full of happy, fun things um, and sad things and things that piss us off. But two things I wanted to bring to your attention because this is where we live. So this is why we understand how the Republican Party behaves and don't need a Trump whisperer a Republican whisperer to tell us that this is a center-right country and Rush Limbaugh is irrelevant. We have a local radio show here on weekends called Let's Talk Guns. Let's Talk Guns. And it's just just another radio show on a prominent local radio station. Also, our local Fox outlet is promoting the Laura Logan Investigates specials, a series that you might remember Laura Logan as the woman who set fire to her promising career at CBS by lying about Benghazi. Now, who should be on the scrap heap of history? But no, she has a job at Fox because of course she does. And with a special report on how Mexican drug cartels control the entire southern U.S. border. (laughs) And that's what happens on local news here in Republican Trump country. Uh, And secondly, there's a local op-ed in our paper. Oh, this was an op-ed letter. Yes. Op-ed letter. I'm sorry. But it is so reflective of many, 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 many people here that I know. Um, Our paper is now the size of a twig. It's it's been stripped onto nothing. It's basically obituary sports and op-ed pages and a bunch of Associated Press articles. And this 70-year-old guy and his pals are canceling their subscription to our local paper because of the liberal bias and all the fake news. All the liberal bias of the Associated Press. He he name-checked the Associated Press as a liberal outlet. Yes. Now, in the, I, I don't know who this is personally, but I can tell you exactly uh-huh. what he thinks. He thinks that unless his local paper is a printed version of whatever came out of Tucker Carlson's mouth last night, it's part of the great liberal conspiracy. And he and his cranky, bigoted, 70-year-old asshole friends, and I know the diner where they hang out. Oh, yeah. And I know what they talk about when they're there. It's right up the street. Right up yep. the street. I, I know these people, and I know that they're going to cancel their subscription because they are so far down the rat hole that they do not recognize how far down the rat hole they've fallen. This is just their life now. And the and, and the irony is so many of them have state pensions and so many of them are on Social oh, yes, Security and the, Medicare and have nothing yep. to uh, help them survive. Their wives will be in a nursing home on Medicaid and they don't get it. They, they don't they get it. They survive thanks to, thanks to various forms of socialism. <laughs> Right, and they don't know it, and they don't care. The, the food they buy in the diner to bitch over how liberal the Associated Press mm-hmm. is is paid for with socialism. Yes, it is. Yep. And, and yep. That, but they deserve it, Blue Gal. The brown people don't, but they, they earned paid that. Into it. I earned yeah. this. I earned this. this <laughs> they earned it. Yeah. I earned it, this grits and gravy. God damn it. Anyway. Each week for the past 500 weeks, we have posted to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Zingo, and Zingo is upside down, but you'll see why. He's a very playful kitty. Zingo eats freshly poured cat food, the ever-popular fake sponsor of this podcast. Whether you buy Pet Store Perfection or Dollar Store Dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the cat food they eat is only freshly poured. I'm not going to sing this week. Nah. I'm just not. But look, I'd like to hear from our listeners as to whether you need me to sing the jingle or not. Or Some people don't like it. If you're a member Some of people a, like it. If you're a member of a barbershop quartet or a men's chorus or a ladies' <laughs> chorus or a church choir, I want to give us a fully orchestrated version of this song. Go for it. You can visit Zingo at our Facebook page or website, and you can send your internet kitty to us at our or other pet also. Uh, to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that you, if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service, go postal unions, letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Hey, Blue Gal, guess what was in our P.O. box this week? What? Mail. Mail. Mail was in our P.O. box. <laughs> and uh, if I can't guarantee that we'll be using voicemails every week, but if you'd like to call us, I will get your message. Uh, the Skype number is 217-280-4496. 
Uh, the voice, the outgoing message is a British Skype lady, but it is our number and I will get your message. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. It's also a labor of love. I will admit it. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. We have both sides don't merch there too. And we do. Uh, that's a and good boy, thing to get before uh, the election gets really in the uh, way. It, it's our hot item. You yeah. should really order really lots is. of that for your family and friends. Tote bags, mm -hmm. t-shirts, bumper stickers, both sides don't. Please share our show on social media and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties wish to point out that 500 episodes is like 3,500 episodes in cat years. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.